In this video, we're going to talk about what kind of category you fit into and how we can use that category for you to become a PAX Administrator. How to become a PAX Analyst with no experience. Step 1. Let's take a look at who you are. Once you determine where you fit, then we're able to figure out what steps you need to take to create your own unique training plan. And let's divide this into three categories, person A, person B, and person C. You could be person A, someone with a clinical background. You could be an ultrasound technologist, an MRI technologist, or an x-ray tech. It's the natural pathway of curiosity since you're exposed to PACs in that field. Let's just say you're an x-ray tech. You just finished a barium prep on a patient and now you're on another case. You're in the OR now, the operating room. Maybe you're adjusting KVP on a C-arm or whatever it is you do. The patient is on the table, everyone is scrubbed up, and the surgeons have begun the procedure. That's when you notice when the door opens. Someone in a shirt and tie comes stumbling in, in one hand balancing an open laptop and cable wiring in the other hand. He stumbles into the room looking for data jacks on the wall, clueless to what's going on. The surgeons pause and glance over. Who is this guy? Like a crab, he slowly moves across the wall, looking for the next data jack to inspect. And as he's inspecting the data jacks on the wall, you wonder the obvious. Well, if he can do it, I can do it. You think to yourself, how can I get a laptop? And how can I work from home? I'm good with computers too. Yeah, by the way, that crab man with the tie? Yeah, that was me. And this is a true story. Well. The, the part where I walked into the surgery, not the part about the barium prep. I mean, I don't ask people if they've done a barium prep today. Like, hey, did you do a barium prep? What's a barium prep? Well, look it up on Google. Anyways, if you're an x-ray tech, and if you were interested in the IT side of PAX, then you can absolutely transition into the PAX career. You already understand the most important thing, which is meeting the clinical need for the patient. You understand the sense of urgency that comes with the job. In addition, you know the workflows and how the system should be designed to meet the department needs as well as the patient's needs. You understand that the workflows are created for the clinical efficiency. They're not just rules that your department and IT have agreed upon. You understand the reasoning of why the workflows are in place and how it really affects the patient. After all, healthcare is now about the patient-centric approach. The advantage of this background is already having been trained in these modalities. In fact, a decent number of technologists are multi-modality trained. For example, an x-ray tech could be trained as a CT and MRI tech, and so on. Uh, in addition, these modalities can function across multiple departments. For example, an ultrasound tech can work in both in radiology, performing an abdomen pelvis scan, or work in cardiology, performing echocardiograms of the heart. The advantage isn't just limited to clinical imaging technologists. In fact, any allied health worker can benefit from the one big advantage, which is medical terminology. Because they're used to the wording and the use of the environment, everything is much easier. Their use of the environments and being an end-to-end -end user of the various medical systems. Let's take a look at person B. Perhaps you're someone who has a four-year college degree. You may be a computer science major, or perhaps you're someone who graduated high school with networking certifications. Perhaps you've attended a six-week coding boot camp, or be a complete seasoned veteran with years of IT experience. You get the idea. Whatever the case, you may be interested in the healthcare field. The PAX analyst role will rely heavily on your technical background. The benefits of having this background is highly advantageous. The PAX Analyst role is one that falls under the Information Systems umbrella. The role itself is a hybrid role between clinical and IT-based support. 
To be successful, you'll need the understanding of basic networking, server infrastructure, various hardware and software components, likely something you have. Put simply, this is an information systems position, which requires the skills that you already possess. Lastly, we'll talk about person C, someone without clinical or an IT background. If this is you, don't worry at all. In fact, I know several PAX administrators that got this job without having either experience at all. As I said before, this role is a hybrid between the clinical and IT fields. So in order for you to get this job, you will need to work a little harder. As you don't have the necessary skills just yet, we'll just need to learn both aspects of the field. There you have it. We've defined the three different categories that you could fit into. And then from here, we're going to build our plan. At this point, it should be pretty obvious. The clinical person will need to learn more IT, and the IT person will need to learn more clinical, and person C, you'll need both. Step two, let's build a customized training plan. On just a high level overview here, let's plan to do the following. Create a timeline. Use our website, paxbootcamp.com to find free training material. Continue to use YouTube to find more videos. Read some of the books we recommend. Sign up for some recommended lectures, schedule your certification exams, take some practice exams, then get certified. Planning your timeline. Start with the end in mind. In fact, select a finish date right from the beginning. Let's take a look at your calendar. First, you'd need to choose a date where you would complete your training, and the recommended timeline is about six months. Then choose a date where you'd like to get certified in a specific area, for example, networking, CompTIA A+, or the CIIP Imaging Informatics Professional one. Um, recommended timeline for that is about six months as well. And lastly, you would choose a date where you would start applying to jobs. You can start applying in five months uh, based on the fact that you may pass your first exam within six months. So for person A, or the clinical person, here's your plan. Use my website, paxbootcamp.com, to stick with the guide that we've created for you. Then read the book for Imaging Informatics. We highly recommend that you read the Sim Practical Im Imaging Informatics Foundations and Applications for Practical Professionals. In fact, if you were to only read one book, this would be the one book. The book contains content for both medical and information systems. It's an all-in-one book that's specifically geared towards a PACS professional. Step three, let's read. Each chapter contains practice exams that can help solidify the chapter contents for you. Lastly, the chapters of the book are based on the topics that are covered in the CIIP certification exam. So if you're an x-ray tech, CT tech, you're likely eligible to take this test. So it would make sense to read this book on your path to certification as a certified imaging informatics professional, as well as learning everything you can about the PAX field. Read the book for networking. The one I recommend is the Exam Pram CompTIA Network Plus book. The reason why I chose this book is the same as the above. It's a book that's geared towards a specific certification exam. In this case, it's the CompTIA Network Plus certification. As you read, you'll learn about the network communication concepts that are integral in the PAX field. In addition, you'll be preparing for a certification. And if you're a whiz, you can master this certification you may even get an entry-level job as a network engineer, but let's keep our eyes on the prize. You want to become a PAX administrator. Step 4, let's watch. YouTube. Use YouTube to watch free content. For PAX content, stay subscribed to this channel. For networking, the exam cram book might be a little boring to read by itself. So to complement this book, check out Professor Messer's YouTube channel. He has a series of training courses organized into YouTube playlists. Just go to their channel and look for the CompTIA Network Plus training course. These videos are awesome. There are about 101 videos in this specific course, but organized into short segments. Don't have time to watch YouTube videos, you say? No problem. Next time you're driving in your car, put this on instead of the radio. Listen to it, don't watch it. Next time you're doing dishes or doing laundry, put this on the background. Easy peasy. If you've started reading the Network Plus book and feel like the topics are a little too advanced for you, 
don't freak out. We can take a step back and instead start from the basics. Read the CompTIA A Plus certification book. The book gives you baseline computer knowledge and skills. IT professionals use this certification as a starting point to launch into their relative specialties. Again, this book is geared towards the certification. There are a ton of A plus courses available online, but for free and high quality content, we highly recommend going back to Professor Messer's YouTube channel and looking for the CompTIA A plus training course. Again, it's free and good quality. There are definitely more books and more training material out there to read and to study, but the goal is not to know everything before your first job. It's to know enough. If you're eligible for an ARRT imaging professional, take the CIIP exam. As a certified imaging informatics professional, you'll have a greater chance of getting the job. Check out abii.org. That's the American Board of Imaging Informat Informatics. They're the ones who um, provide the exam. Look at their eligibility criteria. If you're eligible, schedule the exam today. Like right now. Open your calendar and set the date to about 6 to 12 months from now. If you're good at taking exams and you're really aggressive about getting this job, then choose 6 months. If you want to prepare at a steadier pace, then choose up to 12 months. Whether it's 6, 8, or 12 months out, out, the most important thing is to choose a date. Mark that date on your calendar and commit to it. An important step in preparing for the CIIP board exam is to take practice exams online. You can purchase practice exams from SIM. SIM is the Society for Imaging Informatics and Medicine. They come in the form of lectures and practice exam packages that you can purchase. You can also purchase practice exams directly from our website, paxbootcamp.com. At this point, you have two books to read and an exam to prepare for. In your leisure time, you're listening to related content on YouTube. This is no small feat. At the five month point, you can start applying to jobs. Personally, I would wait until I've received the CIIP certification. However, because hospital requirements vary, it's not a bad idea to test the waters. It's also important to note that even after getting certified, it may not be enough to be offered a position at certain hospitals. At this point, you may want to consider taking the CompTIA A plus exam or the CompTIA Network Plus exam to strengthen your resume. And at the end of the day, keep applying to jobs. For person B, the IT professional, here's your plan. Use my website, paxbootcamp.com, to stick with the guide that you've created or that we've created for you. Read the book for imaging informatics. It's the same book that we mentioned before. It's highly valuable since it has the clinical and the IT side of it. Start applying to jobs. Since you're already in the field of information systems, you may be able to start applying much sooner than a clinical professional would. You already have the technical expertise, and your job is to fill the gaps with medical knowledge. In order to fill these gaps, I highly recommend a book for medical terminology. Just about any book from Amazon will do. You can find some links below. And if you're eligible, take the CIIP exam. Practice exams can be purchased from SIM or the PaxBootCamp.com website. In addition, you should research the following through Google search or on YouTube. Learn about imaging modalities such as CT, MR, or ultrasound, and also learn about radiology workflows. Use YouTube to find free and valuable content. For person C, you have no prior experience in the medical field or in the information technology field. This just means you'll need to acquire experience. If you don't have a college degree yet, you can apply for starting roles such as a patient transporter or a medical receptionist. If you have a bachelor's degree, then you can look for a radiology film library role. The film library clerk can gain significant experience with managing radiology images, workflow, and CDs. You will learn a lot. I personally know a few people who have transitioned into the IT space from here. In your spare time, read the book for A-plus computer certification. Read the book for networking, read the book for imaging informatics, and read the book for medical terminology. In your spare time, additionally, get the a certification and try to get the Network Plus certification as well. Having these two certifications will move you up in your career and you'll be allowed to work as a network engineer while trying to transition into the PACS administrator job. There we go.
video, there was a very high level overview of what to do whether you're person A, person B, or person C. Since this is a long process that requires a lot of time and monetary investment, the last thing we need to discuss today is mindset. Whether you're person A, person B, or person C, you need to be the following three. You need to be highly committed, you need to be a perpetual learner, and you need to be open-minded. You must be highly committed. You must decide now that this is what you want. Like any other new challenge, obstacles will come in the form of failure. It'll come often, but you must simply try again until you overcome it. Convince others that you can do this. Be persistent. The hardest part is getting your foot in the door. Once you're in, even with the slightest experience, the opportunities will be endless. You'll need to be a perpetual learner. Typically, there's no formal bachelor's degree that prepares you specifically for this role. I know because I looked it up. You'll need hands-on learning, experience, and self-learning to move forward. You could be an expert on the clinical side, but you'll need to learn more IS. And you could be a network engineer, but you'll need to learn more on the clinical side. My college professor once said that you can tell how truly intelligent a person is by their ability to say, I don't know. By admitting that, you'll be more open to learning new things. And you must have the ability to take initiative and do your own research. Lastly, you have to be open-minded. There's always something that you can learn from people along the way in your journey to becoming a PAX professional. With that, folks, that concludes this video of how to become a PAX administrator. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Like and subscribe to see more. Speak. A.E.